What's going on guys and welcome back to Northern Valley. It's been a few days since the last episode. That's I'm that might be an understatement. But yes, I've been extremely busy and I apologize sincerely and I wish I really do. I wish I could put more time into my channel, but I'm slowly working to get to that point where I could eventually hopefully do this full time and get videos out to you um, you know, every day, every other day, whatever. But Let's get back into Northern Valley here. We are back in the park for, I think, one last episode for now. After this episode, we will then go in and probably start the main city on this map, which I am totally excited for. I hope you guys are too. And if you are, hit up that like button. But, um, yes. Okay, so in between episodes, there were a few things that happened and... The biggest thing for me was I ended up getting 16 gigs more of RAM. So now I'm up to 32 gigs of RAM. And of course, the first thing that I did was go into the workshop and download, well, a few, I guess might be an understatement, uh, assets and mods. Uh, the only real mod that I got is the Move It mod, which I use at some point in this episode. But yes. All of that will be in the asset list that's always in the description under this video. Uh, so if you ever need to find out what map I'm playing on or any of the things that are going on in the city, go ahead and check out the workshop collection. It's linked down there for your convenience. Okay, so you saw me just put down this like little broken pier kind of asset and that was a comment that I got in the last episode. A lot of people wanted me to do something with that little island across the river here in, in between the Twin Falls, I think is what we were calling those. Uh, so I went ahead and I started to do something and I saw a really good suggestion that said put a broken bridge in there and I don't know, I, I took that and I ran with it. I didn't really find a, a bridge per se, but these little broken assets are actually vanilla assets. You should all have them if your game is updated. But yeah, they look perfect. They they look the part. It's great. So I really, I started here in this episode, in this time lapse, and I started to kind of work this island a little bit. I wanted this to be kind of like an abandoned island, like way back in the day when this park maybe just opened up and just started. They had like a little leg of the park over here on this tiny island, which is probably actually pretty, would have been pretty cool to go to. I... I personally think if this were a real city uh, but you know never hurts to pretend but yeah I guess at some point the river probably flooded or got quite uh, built up and uh, that bridge kind of got swept away so now it's just run down and abandoned so I found that uh, abandoned house that's kind of falling apart really fits the part here and then this path I love how this eventually kind of starts to decay along the the path and then it leads over to this little I wanted to do something over here so I ended up putting these walls down and they snapped the ground to them a little bit so it was a little iffy but I figured something would have been over there at some point if this park system over here had existed so I went ahead and put a little area where people may have been at one point and uh that's that <laughs> speaking of the waterfall or the river overflowing I actually went through, and I had mentioned this in the last episode, of trying to get the waterfalls to be a little bit more powerful. So before I did anything on the map, I opened the save up and I put a stronger water source at the beginning of this river at the edge of the map. And I just kind of watched it and the water eventually flooded the kind of down part of the city down by the dam. And it just, it didn't work and it... Like, my aim was to get the water to go over the waterfall a little bit stronger than it is. And even with the, the increased water flow, it wasn't going over as strong as I thought it was going to. So, we ditched that idea altogether. And uh, we're just going to leave it as is. But you see me experimenting in this area with a lot of the ground texture. And I really like how this comes out. There's the little rock I guess sandy rock texture that I put down on that island from the terraform tool I'm putting down right now. Um, yes, this texture looks great. It looks way better than the actual like cliffside textures of this texture pack. When you're zoomed in on the cliffs, it's it doesn't look great. It it's very pixelated, but from a distance it does look really good. So uh, it's, it's like a take it or leave it kind of situation. 
but I love that new sand texture. It looks like it's kind of, it's a mix of like a coarse sand and like gravel. So it fits really well for this whole area over here. And I guess I didn't really talk about what I did with the terraforming in the beginning of this episode. Uh, I ended up taking some of that like cliffside off and leveled it out just a little bit to make it more, I guess, accessible. And I think it came out in a really, really good way. But uh, I, I got distracted because I uh, turned the camera and I saw the town like in a live mode and everybody was dying. So I went and I put this crematorium in that may or may not be permanent. I don't know. We'll get back to the city after, I guess, this episode when we finish up the park system here. So, yeah, as we've been doing the park over here, the city's been trying to survive. And so far, it looks like they have been. But there's definitely demand that's been fluctuating. But anyway, look at what I'm doing right now. I took the, I guess, I think that's the rock in the surface painter tool. And I went ahead and I made this path work over here a little less, I guess, defined. So when you put the actual pedestrian paths down, it's nice and sharp and crisp. But I went ahead and I broadened those paths up a little bit. And it comes out great. It looks like this path system, I guess... We can imagine that once the bridge went down and that whole like island kind of fell apart or uh, I guess degraded, uh, the path work wasn't very kept up with. So I guess over time the weeds started to grow in on them and uh, it just started to become less of a destination in the path. So I hope you guys like what I'm doing with this area because I did get a bunch of requests to do a little bit more detailing than I did do in the first uh, National Park episode, so I did try to make certain points of interest more, I guess, detailed. So, the other thing that I did on this side, or this area, I guess, is uh, detail a little bit behind this hotel, and I got a comment that said, isn't that the Overlook Hotel from The Shining? And I believe it is, yes. I don't think I mentioned that in the last episode. I honestly haven't even seen The Shining yet. I know, it's... It's like a classic and you have to see it, but I haven't I haven't sat down to watch it. It's such a long movie, isn't it? Anyway, uh, behind this little hotel here, I wanted to make some sort of like, I, I don't know, like a reserve or like just a, a nice area where guests of the hotel can, I guess, take a break from the unkempt nature and come to this little area where there are groundkeepers who are, I guess, maintaining this little area. So I, I wanted to make something that kind of still drew a lot of influence from the surrounding areas, but it was more of a, a like actual meant to be kind of place. So the trees are placed very deliberately and also the bushes and stuff. And this gula grass that I'm putting down, huge theme around the park now. It is, it's everywhere. It's great. It fits really well with this area. And I think we're going to see that a lot more in the city uh, from here on out. So actually right now I'm using the move it tool. If you haven't gotten this tool yet, I highly recommend it. I haven't even really scratched the surface of what it can do yet, but it it obvious it just lets you move anything. It's great. You can move uh, like I just did a prop or you can move nodes and like roads and stuff. And you'll see me do that uh, in a few seconds here when I try to move this uh, this wall closer to the to the uh, path. But yeah, the tree beds, we, we all know those from the condo area that we set up. Those are a pain. I tried to get that to work and it, it uh, the ground still kind of clips through the one of them. But I, uh, I got the rest of them to be kind of nice. So I called that a victory. We're going through and kind of detailing the rest of this here by putting some trees into these planters. And like I said, these are deliberately placed and it, I, I think this kind of draws this whole area back together. And then I wanted to give kind of like a nice sit-down area, a gathering area, so that gazebo kind of thing always makes an appearance when I need to do that. But anyway, we are over here to one of the more highly requested um, features of the park, and that is we're going to go through and do a bike path. And I know some of you are going to be really pumped for this, and some I got a lot of really good suggestions of what to do in the park and I had a couple comments that said try to not overdo it in the park and I completely agree with that I didn't want to do way too much stuff in here 
A national park is usually put in place to kind of preserve nature, so I didn't want to tap into nature and destroy it just to put like a bunch of things in here. Like a lot of a really common one was the rally track for cars that uh, Fresh Popcorn actually ended up doing one in his city, but. Yeah, we're not going to do that over here at least, maybe later? I mean, we do have a lot of room on this map to work with, and I wanted to kind of keep this city kind of like a, a smaller population city so we can do some more interesting stuff like that. But right now, what I'm doing is putting the rock down on the bike path, and that... I, I liked the bike path idea, but the uh, bike paths are obviously paved here. And what... <laughs> Before I talk about that, what I'm doing right now is putting a kind of a destination for people. So with these bike paths going through this entire mountainside, there was really not going to be anyone like that wanted to or needed to go through with the bike and like ride on it. So what I did is I added this little park right here and it overlooks the dam, which overlooks the entire valley. And it looks amazing. We're going to see more of that in the live portion of this video, but yeah, I wanted to give people some sort of, I guess, reason to use a bike and come up here. So we're going to sit in the live portion and see if maybe someone uses it. I'm really hoping they do. But uh, yes, and this bunker is really cool as well. Um, I don't know if you guys know anything about the Hoover Dam, but there are actually bunkers near the Hoover Dam just to protect it because it was marked as a high-risk target during World War II. So, I don't know, interesting little factoid, but the time lapse is coming to an end and we will kick it into the live version and I'll continue talking about what we did in this episode. All right, here we are back live in Northern Valley and we're up here in the bike park overlook-ish park. I don't know what to call this, but yes, you can see the extremely beautiful view right here. This is so amazing. The dam right in front of us, of course, the Lake Valarmo right here below us, and that log disappears if I turn too far that way. Interesting. Uh, they're right in the distance, kind of in the center of the frame right now, is a weird looking rock type thing, and that is a bunker that I placed on the other side of the, uh, I guess, lake. But yes, you can see the beautiful, beautiful valleys right here. It's so great. This is amazing. So, all right, oh, didn't want to go into the menus there, but here we are, and we're back at this little park here, and I'm hoping to see somebody use this in this part of the uh, episode, and if not, I'm going to be kind of disappointed, but yes, like I was saying, I needed to put a destination up here so people would use these bike paths, so these are here, and I needed to find a, a park that's not going to use any electricity or water because I really, really didn't want to bring all of that up to here so yes we're right here and it's beautiful let's jump over here and kind of just check out this little bunker right here i didn't detail anything around it and i may or may not it might just be like a little well you know what no a path up here might not be a bad idea just because it would have had something up here but yes this is a nice little uh bunker view strategic assets are what the military usually defend against and I would say that this dam would be a strategic asset like I was saying the Hoover Dam during World War II was labeled as a strategic asset so they did have to protect it because could you imagine like one like missile or bomb or something hitting a dam it would just explode and and all of the water would just you know help the the bomb out so yes um, toward the end of this series, when we're pretty much done with it, I think we are going to delete the dam and then see what happens. So hopefully you guys will be around for that. And, uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that. It's a little like love hate kind of thing. It's going to be interesting to see it though, but all right. So I started to talk about these bike paths and I didn't finish my thought on them, but yes, the normal bike paths, uh, are paved and these mountain trails that I set up through here. Ideally, mountain bike people would want to ride these paths because, I mean, these trails are, like, right up the sides of mountains. They get kind of tough. Up through here, not so much. Uh, it's pretty smooth going up here. And then you get down here, and this is a pretty steep uh, little path down here. So, yes, this would be a really, really tough little trail. So, yeah, in, in real life, uh, the bike trails aren't paved. So... I was looking through like the workshop and I was trying to find a 
like a mod or something that would change the bike paths to dirt and uh, it I couldn't find anything and so I went in and I remembered that you could use the uh, surface painter to paint over and it replaces the pavement so that changed everything I was so happy that this worked out the right way so now all of our mountain bike paths over here are completely dirt and it's awesome and I mean there are decals around here, but uh, I guess we can imagine that maybe they're just like bike trails or something. And yeah, so these are set up over here for people to park at and then hopefully hop on their bike and then drive or ride rather up to that really, really amazing lookout. And I just wanted to come in here and kind of smooth out all of this uh, just to kind of make this kind of nice up here. Okay, we have a taker. No, he decided... Oh, wait, no. He's here. What are you doing? Where are you going? So, you are going to this small parking lot right here. Huh. Look at that. You parked over here to walk over here. Interesting. Um, you know what? While I'm right here and while it's on my mind, I kind of want to come up here and rename this the uh, Dam Overlook. Yes, that Dam Overlook park over here. Uh, just because if we click on somebody randomly and they're going to that, we know that they're going to be going up there to, uh, you know, check it out. But I think, uh, hopefully maybe somebody will see that and want to get to that. And, yeah, we can, uh, maybe go and look at the rest of the improvements while maybe the computer sends somebody over there. That would be nice, but... Alright, so, over here, back past the Overlook Hotel, we have the courtyard in the back. It, it's really nothing special. And I was kind of struggling to find something else to put back here. I liked how this was kind of like a, a gathering zone. But, yeah, there really wasn't much else I could do back here. I don't know. If anybody has any ideas, I'm always open to suggestions. Leave those in the comments below. And, yeah, the prop... or Yeah, prop anarchy mod. Sometimes when I put decals down around here, uh, around things like this, it, for some reason... When I load the game back up later, it goes ahead and deletes them. So, yeah, sometimes I have to go through and fix that. And this is definitely one of those times because it's uh, it's gone. But there's probably a really good chance that I'm going to come back and load the game up again. And these will be deleted once again. But I had tried to keep Prop Anarchy on. I could change it to Always On, but I don't know... If I really want that, because when you place roads down, it does get annoying to have trees go through them. But I guess I could deal with that if I had to. But, uh, yeah, anyway, let's go down and check out these trails. And these are the... These are pretty cool. I like how the wider trail throughout here kind of gives this the look of, like... It's it's not a, it's not a forged path. Well, it kind of is a forged path, but it's not like a pristine kind of thing and then you can come down here into this new valley so yeah before this whole thing was pretty much this level like throughout here in terms of terrain and I went through in the very beginning of the time lapse and I flattened this out just to give this area something more I mean this is it before it was just like a waterfall in a in and a river in a valley now it looks like there's I guess really cool geological things going on down here and we have, I guess, a spot of interest on the top of this river. So I got a, a few suggestions from people to, that were saying to put some sort of boat up here or like a kayak rental thing. And I don't know anybody in their right mind who would want to put a kayak rental up here. Like open a business renting kayaks with these two massive waterfalls right here. That just screams lawsuit. I don't know about you. I personally wouldn't want to do that, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of why I opted out of that. And then, uh, yeah, you get over here, and there's like a pretty interesting little, uh, I guess, shore right here with kind of sand, coarse sand and uh, rocks. And then I guess a couple people decided that they wanted to, you know, go ahead and camp out over here. So I put a couple of these uh, tents down here. And uh, over here we have this path that leads to the broken bridge and I took these trees and I placed them down I kind of figured like a park ranger would I wonder if I can get down here a park ranger would have come down and maybe I guess 
drop these trees on this path to kind of discourage people from wanting to go check out the abandoned bridge. And then I found this uh, abandoned car. Maybe we could imagine it's some sort of like a uh, park ranger's car. And uh, he, he was down here and it got stuck and he just left it. And people over time have picked it apart. But uh, yeah, so over here, the bridge is out. And it it's it's really cool. I like this asset. It looks great and it really it tells the story of this area. Like this whole island is now abandoned. And yes, that tool sometimes does that. It's weird. But yeah, I like this area and like I was saying in the time lapse, it looks like we at one point had something up here for people to visit, like the lodge or something. And then over here, as you go through this little path, it devolves. It's so great. I love this. I love how this came out. And yes, so over here we have the little wall that was here as maybe like a, an outlook kind of destination. But yes, this is pretty much it. And yeah, so where do we go from here? I guess if you guys see anything that needs changed in the park, let me know. I mean, I'm open to it. I kind of want to... I think we're pretty much done up here for now at least um has anybody anybody come over here not really not at all actually so um yeah i want to get back into town because we have some things to take care of like you saw over here we have a really really high demand for industry right now and a pretty big demand for commercial so we need to get that kind of taken care of we also need to get um, the public transportation, we have not touched any of that yet, so we do need to set up some bus lines over here. It's very possible that we could get that done in the next episode, but I really want to get down here and start working on the city. And I keep getting, every time I mention the city, I keep getting people who want to make sure that I'm not going to make this massive city. Like, everyone thinks I want to go through here and just put skyscrapers all the way down this, and I really don't. I don't. I can promise you that. I want to make this kind of developed in here. Uh, a few taller buildings kind of over here. I want to do some sort of like historical downtown area, which might be cool. N really haven't figured out what I want to do with this island yet. Um, I know a couple people really want me to build like a prison over here. And it, it just, it, it would be very out of place. I'd rather do a prison like over here, maybe put like an island. That could be kind of cool. We might do that later. But, yeah, I want to do a historic downtown area with, like, brick buildings. I have a district already themed out for that. It's going to be pretty cool. And then as you get here, I want to do more, like, low-density residential, but in more, like, a suburban, like a true suburban feel where it's pretty much grid kind of based. So, yeah, I'm looking at that for next episode, at least getting that kind of started with the infrastructure. And then, of course, we need to do all of this highway stuff and the tunnels throughout here to get to the harbor, which we're going to do some sort of, like, reclaimed land project. It's really going to be cool. I'm really looking forward to this. And now that I have more RAM in my computer, um, I, I don't think anything can really slow us down except for, I, I don't know, maybe my CPU at this point, which is uh, not not the best. So... Guys, I'm looking forward to it. If you liked this episode, even though we didn't get all that much done, I mean, I always say that, but then I look back and we actually did get a bunch done. So, um, if you liked this episode, of course, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give me a thumbs down, but explain to me why you didn't like it. And, uh, I'm always up for, uh, switching things up. Oh, before I go, actually, I wanted to talk about the other side of the National Park, which is this whole thing over here. I haven't touched this at all, and I'm not going to for now, uh, because the fire watch towers that I have set up over here, the update, or the new DLC coming out in a, a little bit, I, I don't think they even announced a date yet, but the next DLC is going to be a, a natural disasters DLC with like forest fires and everything, and I saw a screenshot, and they actually have the fire watch towers as like an asset to maybe, I guess, protect against forest fires. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that's going to do because we obviously have our national park set up already. So I'm looking forward to that DLC. I will be getting that for sure. So guys, stay tuned for that. And uh, you know what? 
I guess that's gonna wrap this one up. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. Like I said, if you uh, want to follow me on Twitter for updates, and if there's ever any delays on the channel or anything like that, uh, that'll be there first so you can get information fast. The link is in the, the description, as well as the link to my Patreon page, so you guys can go over there and support me with a couple bucks a month. And the more support I get over there, I'll be honest, the more episodes that I can hopefully pump out per uh, week and uh, dedicate more time to the channel than I already am able to. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time, I'll see you back here in Northern Valley.